All right, Sherbs, this is the Marode Altarpiece. It's also sometimes called the Campin' Triptych, and it has Mary and an angel hanging out in somebody's dining room. So let's talk about that. The action of this middle panel is pretty recognizable. It's an Annunciation scene. The angel Gabriel is coming to give Mary the news that she will give birth to the Son of God. He's saying here, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, and so on. The biblical scene takes place in Nazareth, probably in a modest house, and yet most artists set this scene in some sort of palace. In the medieval period, the background is typically gold to show the importance of this scene. This one is doing something different, though. The scene is happening inside a 15th century Dutch home, so not Nazareth and not the year zero, and not on a gold background. Is the artist decreasing the significance of the event by making it look common? There aren't even halos. There is this tiny naked man flying on beams of sunshine though, and that's certainly not common. Maybe the artist was trying to raise the level of the surroundings rather than raising the level of the action. The scene brings the spirituality of the divine significance of this event, the first step in the incarnation of God in human form, into the lives of a Dutch craftsman. If we move from this center panel to the right panel, we'll see a representation of Joseph, Mary's husband, who, for obvious reasons, isn't typically shown in Annunciation scenes since he didn't have much to do with the pregnancy. He's in the next room, constructing some early modern mouse traps. It's anyone's guess as to what that's about. Some people call attention to a line in St. Augustine calling Jesus the mousetrap of Satan, but who knows if the patron or artist could have dug into Augustine's deep tracks for that image. What we don't need to guess about is that the presence of Joseph with his tools, one of which looks remarkably like a cross, raises the level of craftsmen and contributes to that theme of elevating the working class. This takes place in a common home and reminds the viewer that spirituality isn't exclusively for the aristocrats or the clergy. Even the floor seems tilted, seemingly funneling the holy characters from the painting into the real world, bringing the important characters of scripture into everyday life. This painting comes at an interesting time in Europe's history. About 75 years earlier, the population of Europe was decimated by the Black Plague, and this population crash allowed for the social mobility that the feudal system had hindered for so long. It opens up the market and allowed merchants, craftsmen, and others to accumulate wealth. So this transition from a gold background meant to elevate the scene to a common dining room meant to elevate the middle class happens at exactly this time. It's a time of transition. The increased mobility, wealth, and freedom at this time contributes to Europeans feeling like they have meaning in their lives, not just for their afterlives, and paintings reflect this feeling, this falling in love with the details of life. I mean, look at the nails on this door. He even painted the rust, and he painted it beautiful. Okay, so let's look at some more of those details and stay on this left panel. This is the patron. We know this panel was painted after the central panel, and that the male was painted first, and then after a marriage, the female was added along with the guard. They're painted in a walled garden, which has meaning in medieval art. It represents Mary's virginity. It's a fertile area that's closed off. I don't know how else to say that to make the connection more clear. If we move over to the central panel again, we'll find even more iconography for Mary, like this flawless container hanging in the convenient nook a flawless vessel, which is exactly as some theologians would describe Mary. We could keep going forever looking at the details of this painting and trying to understand their iconography, and I encourage you to do that. I'll link to a high defin image of the painting in the description below. For now, we'll look at one more detail, the snuffed out candle. How does a painter represent an invisible act of creation for a being that is, by definition, divine and uncreated? For one, you make the divine character fully formed, riding on beams of light and holding the instrument of his death. But after that, maybe you find a way to capture the sudden loss of air that rooms sometimes take on during moments of excitement. Or maybe the invisible breath of the Holy Spirit whipping through the room. You can do that by illustrating a candle recently snuffed out by some unforeseen force and have the smoke rise up and disperse in the room. A dining room with a floor too steep to contain the magnitude of what is happening. I'm interested to see what elements of this painting you all pick out in the comments below. You can find this painting in the cloisters of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, so I'm going to put it in a playlist called So You're Visiting New York. I also have a playlist called So You're Visiting Rome, Florence, London, Paris, and Spain, etc. Check them out by visiting my page. 
I'll be publishing a new video close to the 15th of every month, so subscribe if you want to be notified about that. You can also check out my Patreon, which is linked below, and as always, thanks for watching.